the way that dermatologists have always been trained, we, we largely learn through textbooks. Only about 5% of dermatology textbooks will include classic presentations in darker skin tone. Did you know that eczema is one of the most prominent chronic diseases impacting black people today? Yet it is underdiagnosed in people with black skin. Why is that? Hey, it's BG and we're going to answer that question today, but before we do, I need you to do a few things for me, like subscribe to this channel, tap that notification bell, hit that like button, and make sure to follow us across all of our social media. The details are in the description below. So how can a doctor diagnose eczema on black skin if many of them don't even know what it looks like on black skin? A recent US study found that less than 5% of the images in general medicine textbooks actually showed conditions on darker skin. The result can create different healthcare experiences depending on your skin color. It's why companies like Aveeno are pushing to make all skin tones more visible and it's why we're speaking with a dermatologist today to understand more about eczema. Dr. Sonia, thank you so much for joining me here on News You Can Use. Brandon, thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. Listen, I want to get into an honest conversation with you and I want to talk about skin because we all know how important the skin is. But we also know that sometimes whether you have a darker skin tone or a lighter skin complexion, if you are dealing with a skin disease, for example, like eczema, it might not always be as visible to health practitioners. So I want to first start off with what is eczema? So eczema, very, very common chronic inflammatory skin condition and typically characterized um, by things like red, scaly, itchy patches that love to come in flexures like the neck, the fold of the arm, sometimes behind the knees. And when we look at that kind of classic presentation, that's how it presents in Caucasian skin. So with eczema, does it impact a person differently if they have darker skin compared to lighter skin? When we look at things like the structure of the skin in white mm -hmm. skin versus darker skin, we know that structurally the skin is actually different. So in darker skin tones, the skin tends to have lower ceramide content and ceramides are really important for the function of the skin barrier. Again, remember that skin barrier is what keeps the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. And there are also higher rates of transepidermal water loss. So more water that escapes the skin and all of these things together tend to make patients with darker skin tones more prone to eczema flares and can make their skin disease more resistant to treatment. But in darker skin tones, it looks a little bit different. We're going to be looking at different colors. So inflammation looks different in darker skin tones. It tends to be a little bit more purple or violaceous. Um, it can almost be ashen or gray due to, to the dry scaliness. Um, and, and very often due to the chronicity, the areas tend to be thickened and can be more and can be thicker in, in darker skin tones. You know, I'm so glad that you highlighted that it can look different depending on what your skin tone is. How does that affect somebody though when they walk into a doctor's office? The way that dermatologists have always been trained, we, we largely learn through textbooks. Only about 5% of dermatology textbooks will include classic presentations in darker skin tones. There's a gap in, in the learning. So when patients present to their doctor, especially if they do have darker, um, a darker skin color, that classic presentation is not always as obvious. Um, so, so we're really working at improving um, the, the ability for, for doctors, especially dermatologists, because this is what we do um, to, to make that diagnosis in patients with, uh, with darker skin colors. You know, this is so revealing because I, it really feels like you're unveiling the curtain into the training that goes on and how sometimes there may be systemic issues that can affect the end user in the healthcare system. I want to ask you, do you feel like our healthcare system is doing enough to diagnose, uh, you know, diseases like eczema on darker skin people? There are always areas for improvement and this need has definitely been recognized and we're working at partnering with dermatologists to improve the knowledge of clinical presentation um, in darker skin tones in ways to improve diagnosis and treatment plans. That's amazing and I'm so glad that you're highlighting this program because I feel like more programs like this are so desperately needed. I mean you work there right on the front line so 
talk to me a little about, if you're comfortable with it, about sometimes the different treatment, um, you know, and healthcare experiences that people with fairer skin tones compared to people with darker skin tones may experience. Once a diagnosis is made, an appropriate treatment plan, an effective treatment plan can be, can be put into play. The other thing is that sometimes things like redness or inflammation are, aren't, they're not always obvious um, mm -hmm. at the surface. And so patients can present with things like itch. And so itch is one of the characteristic features of eczema. And this is where things like skincare play a role from a prevention perspective. We're looking at um, using skincare as a method of, of replenishing your skin barrier function and looking towards um, things like gentle cleansers, regular moisturizers um, that, are, that are really going to build it up and prevent the, the potential eczema flare-up. You talked about sometimes, you know, folks can have that delay in diagnosis. What are some of the potential long-term effects that could happen if you don't get diagnosed in time? So there's one study in the U.S. that was done looking at patients who have accessed health care, uh, particularly black patients. So black patients um, are about 30 percent less likely to access uh, health care. When they do access health care for their skin disease, it typically takes more visits to get their skin under control. So your skin may be more resistant to treatment. You may have more um, chronic inflammation that can lead to things like hyperpigmentation. And also just looking at the psychosocial impact of chronic itchy skin disease, you know, it disturbs things like like sleep, uh, particularly in young patients, like in kids. Um, and that can have an impact when it comes to things like school and studies and being able to concentrate. You know, I know a big question on everybody's mind is, is eczema curable? Can it be cured? It's a really good question and we're not there yet. While we're working on things like therapeutics and strategies to prevent eczema flare-ups, we're not at a point that we have an off switch for eczema yet. It's always grumbling in the background and I think one of the things that is frustrating for, for parents and for patients, particularly young kids, is that the threshold for flares um, is always there and, and can, can be reasonably low. And things like stress or irritant exposure can trigger a flare up in the background. And, it, and it's always more reassuring when we can identify what that trigger is. But sometimes we don't know. Is there any recommendations you have about ways that they can treat the disease? So when we're looking at eczema, the biggest thing that we can do for prevention is engage in skincare that's going to be appropriate for a patient living with eczema. And these are going to include things like gentle cleansers and regular moisturizer. So I love to cancel patients on ingredients to look for. Um, and you can look for things that are going to stimulate ceramide production, things like oats. Um, they also have really great anti-itch properties. I know for kids who often struggle with itch, especially before bed, doing something like an oatmeal bath is really helpful. Wow, this is so, so insightful. And Avino, you know, encouraging this conversation. That's a start. But someone who works on the inside, what does a fix look like for you? There's not going to be a single solution, but I think part of it is going to be recognizing one, that there is a gap in the care that we are providing to patients and getting that understanding that when patients, particularly with black skin and eczema come to the dermatologist, their disease is typically more resistant to treatment and may require uh, more than just a standard intervention. There may be some people watching this and they might be living with eczema and they might not even know. What advice would you have for them? Speak up. So don't hesitate to ask if you are um, concerned about your skin involvement. And for patients who have tried treatment or if the diagnosis is not completely obvious, these are patients that may benefit from specialist care. So being your own advocate is also really important. And what advice would you give to parents of maybe young black kids who they might think have eczema, but they've gone to the doctor and it hasn't been diagnosed? What would you say to them? I think it's also really important to, to ask the question, asking, you know, 
quite directly, you know, what is the diagnosis? Is this eczema? Um, doubling down and getting an understanding of things like skincare. You're so right. Dr. Sonia, you have been so insightful on this conversation. I feel like a lot of people are going to want to learn even more. And of course, we'll provide those details in the description below. But do you have any social handles that people can follow you at by any chance? Well, you're always welcome to follow me um, on my personal Instagram account, which is at Skin Dr. Sonia. Um, there are also great resources from the um, Eczema Society of Canada, as well as the Canadian Dermatology Association um, that has some great uh, learning resources. Thank you so much. And I will be following and I will be in touch because I want to make sure I got all the healthy skin that I need. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Sonia, for joining me. We really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey, BG Squad. Thanks so much for checking out our channel. And listen to this. We have more great content for you, like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.